Hey everyone, my name is John Moore and I'm a photographer from Portland, Oregon. I am making this video because you want to know if I like the GFX 50R and the Mitocon 65mm, right? I mean, let's go over it. I get asked on a daily basis uh, if I like this camera and the lens combo setup. Uh, and the answer is yes, I absolutely do for the short answer. But uh, if you want the long answer, I'll go into how I make all my images or almost all my images, how I edit and how I interact with my subjects, hopefully in future videos. But for this video, I'm just going to go over the basics on how I edit and hopefully that will answer some questions for everyone out there. Um, and so, yeah, let's just dig in and see what we can, we can make. Okay, so here in Lightroom, I've imported some recent pictures that I've taken into my quick collection, and I'm gonna go over how I do my process here. Um, so this is an edited picture of my beautiful friend, Sophia. Um, but what we're gonna do is reset this. And as you can see, it's very, it needs to be straightened up. <laughs> okay, there we go. And I already have a preset that I've made for this t uh, for this um, particular image right here. Um, but I, I, I it started off from a base that I have right here. You can see I have JRM presets. That's my initials. Um, and I have never really made presets. I've always you know gone and used the VS Code presets uh, and more recently the Classic Lab presets. Um, and kind of use those as a base. Uh, but recently I'm, you know, I, I just keep on like, uh, I just got tired of editing the same thing over and over again. So I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna make my own presets, which is really, really simple. And I'll get to that here in a minute. But um, let's try to edit this just from scratch real quick. And I'll show you, let's see, I think so we're just gonna go through here and then I usually just kind of see what this looks like with, a, you know, the contrast all the way to the left. Highlights are gonna be a little bit, I don't see anything super blown out in this picture, so I don't need to really crush that quite yet. Uh, I wanna increase my shadows a bit and let's bring my whites down right here and I, let's crunch the blacks a little bit, shadows up and let's just increase the the exposure here and let's go. So a lot of my pictures, um, I found that like dehazing is such a good tool. Uh, I never go past 24, it seems to be the sweet spot, but let's just go right here and see what happens. Um, and let's increase the contrast right there. So already we're kind of getting somewhere. I'm gonna do it before, this is before and this is after. So it's still looking a little flat. There's not really um, a color enrich enrichment uh, going on inside the photo. And I'll get to that here in a second. But um, let's go down here and see what we can find. So I normally just don't even touch this. There's only rare occasions where I touch that. Uh, I usually just do everything uh, manually through here. But um, where all the magic happens is, is in the color area. Um, so I have on my, on my base preset that I've made, which is this one right here, this is really bright, but I'll get to that in a minute. Um, I have modified these color, um, not color wheels, but color, you know, sliders to my liking. And I've just, um, saved it and kind of modified them for each picture that I need to, to modify them for. But um, right here is where you're gonna get a lot of fun play with color. Um, so typically in the shadows, you know, I, I, try, I tend to go for like a um, more warm uh, approach or like a red approach. This one's a little tough to do. I think I might have more success with the midtones. Let's see, I'm kind of getting somewhere here, but um, a lot of the magic happens with this area right here. And I, it, I'm not gonna go through and uh, do all of this right now, but uh, I can guarantee, guarantee you all these presets, um, most of the magic happens in this general area. And um, so let's, let's 
let's just see what happens when I put the so this is the the base preset that I put on everything as you can see the exposure is, is at 80 plus right here I'm just gonna reset that and already we're seeing some you know a lot better results here so before and after um, it's a little green um, so which is kind of nice it's already looking like a, a usable picture in my opinion uh, let's go to shadows and actually let's go to blacks here and kind of crunch those a little bit we're already getting um, somewhere here but let's bring the saturation down just a tad and crunch that contrast just a bit right there now let's compare it to the original edit that I have so there is that and here is the new one we just did which you can tell the overall image is a little bit greener um, so we can just kind of add some magenta to that and let's see if that fixed anything yeah so we're kind of getting somewhere right there and then maybe add a little bit of warmth and so yeah it's that's kind of where you know what I work with uh, this is a preset that I've made. Um, I can rename this something fancy and share it with anybody that wants it. Um, but that's it's been a great preset that I use for um, my GFX. Uh, the GFX files just handle um, dynamic range beautifully. I, I love it so much. Um, but let's just go through some of the classic lab stuff just to show you what it looks like. Um, so here's kind of what we're working with here. It's it's kind of, it's, it's good, it's good. It, it's a good base for um, for some choices. Like this is pretty good. There's like a lot of grain added in this one. I like that. Um, and you know, before, I don't think I zoomed in on this before, but let's uh, remove some of this grain see what that looks like so you can tell the GFX just takes really sharp images um, and I do add grain on a lot pretty much all my, my images I didn't get to that earlier but since this thing is you know 50 megapixels which is just a, a lot it, it is enough it is enough for you if you're worried like oh, should I get the 100 I mean if you have diamond hands like go for it but for me, I I struggled getting mine uh, two years ago, and uh, mine was three grand. Now they're you can get them used for two grand if you're lucky enough. And um, I say get this camera for sure. But let's just go and look at another picture here. I'm getting off topic, so here's a picture of my friend Jordan, and this is this this picture has no edit at all right now, so. Let's kind of let's see what we're working with here first. I want to get my white balance dropper and kind of get a white balance in a place where I can, um, where I like it. I'm going to increase the exposure here. Um, get, a, get the contrast all the way over here a little bit. Highlights coming down. Shadows. Let's see what these do. That's that's looking good. Whites. That's look good. Let's see. And let's go down to, okay, so that's already looking better. Let's go to before and after. All right, great. And that's just using the, just this right here, you know, and uh, which most of you know, but um, just wanted to show that for some people that may not know like what some of these sliders do. And let's just have some fun with some colors here. And let's see what our shadows look like when we add some red to them. And then let's go to our highlights, add some blue on top of that. And it's looking pretty cool. I like that. Because, um, you know, I just go for cool photos only. <laughs> but um, let's go to, let's see what our midtones look like with uh, something in here. It might be too much. All right, I like that. That's pretty good. And let's do it before and after. Um, this is probably close to what I would get. I think I might add some green on the base white balance here. That's looking pretty good. But I would, you know, explore different options in this. But let's try my green, no grain. <laughs> and, and even like outside and indoors, it just slaps. 
Uh, and so I love it. It's a little bit green on my for my taste right there, so that's looking pretty good. Um, the let's see, maybe highlights down or exposure down a little bit right here. Bring highlights back up, and I think I like that. That's pretty good. And let's look at a before and after on that. That looks great. Awesome. And uh, that's kind of where my base would, or that's what I would start with right there. And as you can tell all the edits that I've made with these color channels. I mean, I just went in and just dived in and it, this took years to kind of polish that. Um, it's just, yeah, so I just got tired of just doing it all the time, made my own preset and there we go. Um, and <laughs> you can see some of my studio work right here. It's vastly different from just my natural light and, uh, and like most of the studio stuff is sh shot on a um, Canon R or R5 or whatever the case may be. But um, yeah, just for the GFX purposes, this is what I've been using. Uh, let's go to another uh, picture. This is from a recent visit I did in my hometown of Athens, Tennessee. And this is my friend Aaron's grandfather. His name's Gary. He's such an awesome guy. Let us uh, roam around in his junkyard and uh, I'm sorry. It's not junk. It's not junk. All right. Let's just. Get... <laughs> but he's. It was an awesome time. Um, just. Uh, just wanted to take some pictures um, of him with his cars, and it was a fun time. So like, let's go to. Like, this is you know before, and this is after. Uh, let's re just reset this. As you can see, I've gotten my crop. My crop. I had kind of had more of the car in here, but I wanted to center him up in the image a little bit. So. Let me just do that one more time right there. Cool. And let's just do a green, no grain. And there, there we go. Um, this doesn't have any grain on it. I think that's why it's named that, but uh, we can add grain and uh, go from there. But let's see on this one, it's a tad overexposed. Let's go down a little bit. Shadows going up some, that's looking pretty good. Maybe a little bit right there. Right there, and let's look at my original edit. Yeah, it's pretty close, and even adding some grain to this picture, I think, would kind of benefit. I don't think I originally did that, and you know, the size and the roughness, you can dive into all that. But typically, when I, what I do, I I love adding grain because when I export these pictures, I normally have to do them like half the size of what they actually are because there's no reason for me to upload these to, to Instagram or my you know my film groups to share them and at full size like nobody I mean it's just the files are too large it, you can't really capture it and what I've learned from doing art and design through Photoshop shop all these years is scaling down and then sharpening or you know that's that's the best way to really do it because if you just scale down without sharpening you're just you're just kind of compressing a lot of details and um, information that is just not present you, you, when you scale anything down in my experience I've always had to you know when I, when I sharpen it it's that's that's when it really comes to life again um, but yeah anyways I don't know if that's making any sense but uh, this is my first video about any of this kind of stuff, so whatever. <laughs> I'm just winging it. And uh, let's go to uh, this image right here. I shot recently in Tennessee in Knoxville. It's loading because this picture is on my magnet drive, my G drive. So let's just give it some time. Okay, great. Now this picture took a little bit um, more work. Um, I'm not completely satisfied with uh, the way the clouds turned out. I wish I had gotten, um, you know, a couple more exposures of this, um, low, like, you know, darker exposures to compensate for the sky. But, you know, it is what it is. And uh, I was, I, I mean, I saw this down the road from my mother's house and I just got out of my car, no tripod, just handheld. And as you can see, there's a lot of detail in this image. I really like it. I think I shot, yeah, I shot this with the Mitocon 65, of course. Uh, I think I shot this probably at f5.6 or 8 or somewhere around there. 
Um, but and you know, like let's see what this looks like before. It looks like that. So that's what I'm working with. And also, I shoot everything raw. Um, I think in camera, um, I don't shoot JPEG and raw. I just shoot raw. And so I always have to keep in mind that the the pictures are going to look better in post all the time. Let's dive into this picture real quick. Um, as you can see, the biggest thing I did was a mask here. So without the mask, is that how you do it? Let's just reset this picture. How about that? Okay, so starting from scratch, I'm just going to go to my my um, preset here. That's already looking pretty good. Um, one thing I forgot to go over was uh, maybe I did the dehazer. It's just an amazing tool, um, and it kind of just gives it this beautiful bloom effect. Let me just like that. So without it, you know, it it, it doesn't give as much atmosphere. You know, that's with and with, you know, so let's go up and uh, there's no redeeming this sky. I mean, I could go exposure down and kind of bring the shadows back up, but it's kind of, it, it's looking like an HDR effect right now. Um, so I'm going to kind of bring, I'm actually just going to undo those and leave that right there. And it's one thing that I love about the new Lightroom um, updates is just the, the masking is just amazing. The, so I'm going to select, oh, not a subject. Uh, well, that's a subject right there. Let's do another one. I'm actually just going to undo that and then let's do a sky instead. There we go. So it's going to detect the sky as best as it can. It looks like it did a pretty good job. On the horizon, it's picked it up you know, it bleeds right down in the town in the distance right there. So that's perfect. Um, and then I'm just going to use my down arrows to kind of do that. I don't want to make it too obvious that I did this. So um, we'll just leave it around that. I think that's a pretty good starting point. And then I think this could benefit from a little crunch right here and some shadows right here. And so, yeah, I think that's pretty close to what um, I was working with so this is before and this is after but yeah hopefully this has given you some insight of how I do my photos and to kind of get the film emulation look um, um, yeah and all these you, you know these are, are great VSCO is awesome um, I use that for for such a long time and it's been really really good to me but, um, and the, uh, the classic lab's great too. Um, but just making your own presets is awesome. Um, and you know, I, I, I had to buy presets just to, just to learn how to make my own, uh, in a sense. Uh, and it's taken me years. <laughs> so I, I just kind of, I never went on YouTube or went on any kind of tutorial to learn how to uh, do that and until recently I guess with the, the, I think the GFX really just changed everything for me I started shooting that around two years ago when I picked it up and before that I was shooting the Pentax 67 for eight years and um, editing those pictures they don't need a lot of presets so th this whole preset thing is kind of new to me and when I would shoot digital like for weddings or commercial I um, would just use the base like VSCO presets or something like that, but um, it's a whole new ball game with the GFX files because of the the information that's in these raw files. So I realized I didn't talk about uh, a few things. I didn't talk about the ergonomics of this camera. Um, not great if you don't have a grip. I ended up buying a grip uh, when I first got it. it. It makes it to where I can just hold it like that and just kind of like walk around easily. Um, and I do street photography with this thing. And so I absolutely need to have this. I also have like one of these memory foam things cause this camera is heavy uh, with the Mitocon. The Mitocon is one of the heaviest pieces of glass for its size that I've ever held. Um, it's a beefy boy. Um, I don't know if you can see this, but it is, it's a, it's a chonker for sure. And uh, so, yeah, be prepared for that. <laughs> it's a very, very good build. 
Um, I also didn't uh, talk about sh um, my aperture on those photos that I shot, uh, that I showed you earlier. And most of those are shot at F2. Um, I typically, with all my lenses, kind of stop it down a little bit so I can reduce the chromatic aberration. And there is some uh, wide open on these files, but not much. Um, but mostly what I'm, uh, why I stopped down, especially at night, is that when that lens is wide open, it is more prone to, to uh, flares uh, by lights, like, you know, different kind of lights that are happening in the scene. And uh, so, yeah, you have to be careful with that, but I kind of battle that with my Pentax 67 as well, so with the 105. But I will say that this is, um, if you are coming from a Pentax 67 uh, and 105 setup, this is nearly identical. Uh, the only difference um, is just viewing, um, just like looking through a camera like the Pentax 67 is like the best viewing experience ever. And so that's what you're uh, sacrificing by switching to one of these, but you know, use your imagination. <laughs> uh, but no, it's not that bad. It's just, uh, you know, all mirrorless cameras are kind of weird when it comes to the viewing experience itself because you're looking through an electronic viewfinder. But um, yeah, um, I would love to make more of these videos. This is my first one. So if you guys have any questions, please comment below. Do they say like and subscribe? <laughs> Just kidding. But uh, yeah, I uh, would love to make more of these. So if you have any suggestions on what to uh, make next, please comment and I'll, uh, I'll do my best to make it happen. All right, I'll see you guys later.